Uh, exciting to, uh, to see many of you and many faces I remember. So uh, my name is John Bartlow and I'm the Director of Alumni Relations. So uh, thanks for tuning in tonight. Uh, you know, we would obviously much rather be there in person with you, maybe somewhere like Australia or Arizona. That would be pretty good tonight. But um, hey, you know, the silver linings of uh, COVID uh, that we are connecting with people from all over the country and all over the world that we typically wouldn't get to see. So uh, we've been doing lots of these that focus around particular academic areas. And, and we know that we've had uh, so many amazing individuals who have uh, come through the Honors College, uh, both under Dr. Fuchs and Dr. Brannock and, and, and other uh, wonderful faculty that we've had in that program. So uh, we just wanted to get together and allow Dr. Fuchs to give us some updates on, on what's been going on. Uh, maybe he'll talk about updates of what's been going on uh, pre-COVID. Everything's been a little strange the last 10 months or so, but uh, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Dr. Fuchs and certainly there will be opportunities for you to ask questions and then uh, believe it or not, I've got lots of Pitt State stuff to give away that we will uh, drop in the mail uh, to you after this event as well. So Dr. Fuchs, I'm going to hand it off to you, sir. All right, thanks. It's good to see everybody. Some of you I know, some of you I've seen your names on the rosters over the years, so thanks for joining in. Um, they, they instructed me to kind of just give you an update on what's going on. And I don't want to go, you know, too much detail, but I think that there are some changes in the way the program has been structured since, especially some, some of you who were in it before I uh, was the director, that you might be interested in knowing how, how we're operating these days. Um, and then certainly have some time for questions at the end. So I wanted to start first with uh, the academic setup. I'm guessing, uh, you know, pre-Julie Samuels, uh, the structure that I knew of was you would take some honors gen eds your first two years and uh, be in those honors classes with your colleagues. And then you would take the academic honors program uh, in your junior and senior year once you got into your major. And that was basically the structure of the academics of the program. That's what, that's what everybody did. Well, what we've discovered over the past few years is um, with so many students bringing college hours in with them, because there's this huge push, as you probably know, in the high schools for kids to, you know, I have students who have associate's degrees done already before they even come into to the university. And so we, we, had, we were forced to come up with some other ways for the students to satisfy their uh, requirements. So we still have the honors gen eds, but we only offer two courses a semester, and those often don't fill. Um, and so we're on a two-year rotation so the students can kind of see what's coming up next. Then we also uh, started an academic, or excuse me, an honors engagement project program, which is very much like the academic honors where it's a contract with a teacher in a class, but it's at the lower division level. So a freshman comes in, they don't need geography, they don't need speech, those are the only two classes we're offering, but they've got to satisfy their criteria. So then they do an honors engagement project that semester, but it's housed just through my office. It's just a contract between the teacher, myself and the student. Then the academic honors uh, is still in place, upper division in your major. Um, we created a new spinoff of that a few years ago called the Senior Honors Project. As you remember, the academic honors were tied to one class. You did a three, you know, a three hour class, a project, and you got your, your credits for that. But what we uh, had some students say is I'd rather do a year long project, not necessarily associated with a class because I wanna go more in depth in the research rather than doing two research projects for individual classes. And so we created the Senior Honors Project where it's a year long uh, research project and it has to have a public presentation at the end. And they get academic honors credit for doing that. It's in lieu of two of their academic honors. Another we added when the study abroad stipends came along, and I'm sorry for those of you who were in the program before the study abroad stipends, because it has been a huge boost for the, for the program. Uh, if they go on a study abroad trip, then we give them three credits uh, towards their honors requirements for that because it's above and beyond. And we're required to do a class along with that study abroad experience. So they're doing some academic work as well. And then finally, we are now giving credit for participation in the spring research colloquium. I don't know if that was around when, when you all were there or not, uh, but it's, a, it's an event that at the undergraduate and graduate level where students give a 15, well, they have to do the research obviously first, and then they give a 15 minute presentation, and there's a panel of faculty there that then ask them questions. And so basically our rule is, 
is if you can convince me that this is above and beyond the normal classroom load and, and normal class expectation, then we can talk about counting for credit. So the students still have to have 21 academic credits to graduate uh, in good standing and that they have those six ways of achieving those credits now instead of just the two ways that probably most of you uh, dealt with. So I'll, I'll kind of stop along the way rather than building up a whole bunch of questions at the end. Any questions about that particular academic component of the program? I can say that Julie Allison is still teaching the Gen Psych class. Maybe some of you had her. Susan Carlson is still sword fighting out in the Oval teaching the Gen Lit class. Um, Paul McCallum, awesome, one of the most awesome guys in the world, is still teaching the English class. And then we have some new faculty. Michelle Barnaby is now teaching the geography instead of Kathy Huey. Some of you may have had Kathy Huey for the geography. Uh, we have a new professor named Jillian Moga teaching the speech class. And it's kind of cool because she was actually the president of her honors college where she came from for her undergrad. So it's really cool to have that connection in the classroom there. And then um, let's see, who's the other one? Oh, Chris Lawson, a history professor. We've got an American history class. So those are the six classes that we have on a rotation. Uh, another thing that has changed since most of you uh, were in the program, uh, the ones who are, are what I'll call my kids, uh, were already under the structure with the scholarship program. You may remember that uh, there were two levels uh, when most of you were in the program. It was either the tuition or the tuition, housing, and books, free ride, basically. Well, it was very difficult to manage that budget as tuition rose every year. The, the account had to raise every year to keep up with it. So right, or, right before I took over, um, maybe Julie's second year, they changed that. So now we have a structure that's called Presidential Scholars, and they get $9,500 a year plus a $2,000 study abroad stipend. So their package is $40,000. But it's always just 9,500 that they then apply towards their tuition and their housing. It just enables us to, to control the, the final bottom line of the budget. So there's 12 of those, like there was uh, with the presidentials before. And then there's 12 universities, and their amount is 4,500 plus a $2,000 study abroad stipend. So their package is 20,000. And then we uh, started the Crimson and Gold uh, a couple years before I took over, but we used to take uh, 12 in that category also, but they only got $1,000 a year for two years and no study abroad stipend. And so it was incredibly uncomfortable for me to talk to 36 students about study abroad when only 24 of them got the stipend. And I said, we, we have, we've got to do something different with this because it's, it's just too uncomfortable. So the, the compromise we came up to is we would only take six in the crimson and gold category, but they would get $1,000 a year for four years, and they would also get the study abroad stipend for 6,000. So now we take 30 students a year instead of the 36, and uh, that's the way the, the scholarships are structured. Got some new folks in the room. It's good to see some of you there. Hi, Brendan. Hi, Jennifer. Any questions about that? I'm just so thorough with my information, right? I've given these speeches about a million times in my life, I think. Um, let's see, study abroad. Uh, yeah, you know, they wanted to increase the number of students that could go abroad. Uh, and so they started this right before I came in, $2,000 study abroad stipend that can be used for any trip. So I walked into this and I had a bunch of kids that had money that they needed to spend on trips. And I thought, well, I guess I better organize some trips. So the very first year, 2011, we took a trip to Italy, Greece, and Turkey, uh, took 27. And then we took a year off, and then we took 47. Brendan was on this trip. We took 47 for the World War II trip, which was amazing. We started off in England, and we crossed the British Channel on a ferry to Normandy, and through Paris to Bastogne, um, the Ardennes Forest, through Cologne to Berlin, and we wound up in Dachau and Munich. And uh, it was a 14-day amazing trip uh, for the students. Right, Brennan? I still think of that all the time. <laughs> well, and that was about the World War II. And so while we were in the end of that trip, I really got interested in the Cold War. And so I organized another trip the next year, and we went on the Cold War side of things. So we started in Budapest, uh, and then we went north to Prague. 
and then finished up in Krakow, Poland, and then actually did an extension over to Vienna. And so we kind of covered the, the after World War II Cold War. And, it, you know, I don't know if you know much about that, but it was almost as bad as the Holocaust itself, the way they treated those people in, in the Eastern Bloc. Uh, so that was our fourth, uh, third trip. And then uh, we've done, I think, seven total in the 10 years uh, that I've been director. The last one got canceled because of COVID. Uh, that was supposed to be in 20, I guess. Would that have been 20? Yeah. Uh, Livia went on, which trip? Oh, you went on the England-Paris trip, I think, didn't you, Olivia? Spain and Portugal. Spain and Portugal. Yeah, good. And Evan down there, I see Evan, he went on one of them as well. So it's just a great way for the honor students to travel with somebody they know and with their friends and save a little bit of money. Now they don't have to use it on honors college trips. They can use it on any trip. So I have a lot of students who do the medical missions trips with Zurich and uh, Mandy Peak. You may remember uh, that those names. Um, I've had some students that have done um, a, a theater trip through the communication department. It's just that it, unless they're in that major, those trips don't really mean much specific to them. And so I try to keep mine more historical and culture that really anybody can relate to regardless of their major. Uh, so that's been a real cool uh, addition to the program, I think. And then the, the final thing I wanted to, to share with you is just the, I'm a real believer in developing student leadership. You know, the reason the students are in the Honors College is because they were leaders and they were involved in activities. And I just feel that it's really important to continue developing that in students. And so we have really put a lot of effort into the Honors College Association. Uh, we expanded the executive team from four to eight. So there's a class rep on the executive team now. We have a very active peer mentor program with three peer mentor coordinators and then 30 peer mentors that take the students from the interview day. Oh, I wanna come back and talk about interview day. That's another change we added. Interview day through the overnight and then they track them for the first four weeks of the semester when they come. So it's just to help those students, those new students transition. Uh, we also have teams within the HCA. We have an events team that schedules an event every month, a social event. You all probably remember the welcome back picnic and the holiday party. Those are still going on at my house. I have 90 kids in my house, which is awesome. I love it every year. But we also do bowling and roller skating and volleyball and uh, kickball. We just try to do something every month where the students can come together for that socialization. We have a fundraising team whose charge it is, is to raise at least $500 every year for the good of the cause. We have a marketing team who publishes the newsletter that some of you probably get if you have good email addresses, we send that to alumni. And they also run our social media. We've got an Instagram and Facebook, an external Facebook page. And then we have a, a community service team that organizes all of our community service. And we now require our students to do community service. I think it's really important that the kids understand the importance of giving back. And so they're required to do a certain number of community service uh, every semester to um, state members in good standing. So we, we just, oh, we also have a pillar points, pillar points program. And what that does is it inspires the students to be active and rewards them for their participation. And so they earn points throughout the school year for coming to social events, for doing their community service and additional community service, serving in leadership roles, not only in the Honors College, but across campus. And if they satisfy a certain number of points, then each year they get an award, they get an award called the level of distinction and they get a certificate for that. And then at the end of their time, if they've earned level of distinction all four years, then they are considered a graduate with distinction and they get a nice big medallion to go along with their honors cords. It just kind of sets those kids apart that have truly um, bought in and, and really given to the organization. I wanted to back up real quick and just talk about the interview process because uh, not many of you went through that. Uh, I felt it was really important when I became the director to get these kids on campus and get them vested in making the drive and, and, and meeting their, their classmates. I wanted to see their whites of their eyes. You know, what, what we see on paper uh, as far as the order is often very different than after we have the interviews. So we started that. Uh, we were supposed to do it this past Sunday but because of weather we've postponed to this Sunday. So we'll bring 44 students in to campus 
and I've got four rooms going on simultaneously. There's five judges in each room. There's two faculty, two student, and an alumni of the Honors College that serve on the board. The interviews are 18 minutes long, and it's a 45-point rubric. And so at the, inter at the end of the interview day, we enter all their scores, and we move people around based on the quality of their interview. And I can tell you that I have students who are presidential scholars going into the interview day who don't get in the Honors College based on the outcome of their interview. And I can also tell you that I have students who are not even in the top 30 coming into the interview day who move all the way up into university and sometimes presidential, but usually not quite that far up. Because we want students that communicate well, that have good nonverbal, who uh, you know, are positive, who have done their research. And I just, I think we all think that the interview day is a really, really important process uh, to get us to that final 30 kids that we want in the program. Okay, so that's me. That's, that's what's going on. So you can ask anything about that or anything outside of that, and I'll be happy to share what's going on. Can we join you on an alumni trip abroad? Absolutely, yeah, can we get a stipend? I want to go. I'm in. <laughs> Thank, you. Go. Thank you, Parisa. That's what I want to do. <laughs> to Chile, yeah, yeah. wine country. Happy to be a tour guide. Come there to Australia. Right. I'll be a tour guide. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Australia, we've, we've put that out there the last three times because I let the kids vote on where they want to go. And I put Australia out there, but it is so expensive. It's so uh -huh. much more than going to Europe. I think you just need to do it then. You just need to do an alumni trip to go visit Australia. Yeah, because you guys are all flush, right? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I can find some scraps, you can <laughs> piece it together. I have a feeling yeah, I have you more can problems. Need to visit another. Honors College alum. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll put one together, guys. <laughs> you definitely need the alumni director to go along on that. Oh too. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're the one organizing this. Yeah. 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 The company yeah. I work with actually does have a thing called Go Ahead Tours, and it's for adults. And so uh, I, I talked to John. I think there's another company they use over in the alumni center over there. But yeah, you know, I, I do invite alumni to go along. I know I've sent the link out at times before. It, again, it depends on whether you have a good email in the alumni system. Maybe, John, you can talk about that to make sure, sure. That, that, they, that they're connected. But I take parents. I've taken grandparents. I have to take my mother-in-law every time. Um, <laughs> so, you know, if I can handle my mother-in-law for a week, I'll probably have more trouble with you guys than I would the undergrads is what I'm guessing, though. John, <laughs> Dr. Fuchs, how long have both of you worked for the university? John, you want to go first? Yeah, I think I'm on year 17 right now. This is my 23rd year at PSU and my 11th year uh, as the director. Yeah. Yeah. I came in as the director of bands in 98. Some of you maybe were still here around then. Well, that's when I met you because yeah, I, was, true. I was playing in the jazz band and that's you were right, John. fairly new. Yeah. yeah, I was chair of the music department for eight years and then I became director of the Honors College in 2010. So there's a few questions that have popped up on the, on the chat. So sure. one of them uh, that Jason asked a few minutes ago was, do they get involved with any service organization on campus for that, and I'm not sure what that was like in Actus. So you, mm -hmm. I'd have to go back to what you were talking about at that point. Yeah, what we do is the, the community service that's required for the Honors College has to be HCA sponsored because okay. that way we're supporting our own programs yep. and then we have that community. We usually have six or seven projects every semester. Just kind of depends. Of course, with COVID, we're really struggling, but this is, you know, pre-COVID. Uh, La I think two years ago, it was an Audrey Dainty was president. We decided that there were some other organizations that were struggling getting their students to do the community service. And so we set up a program where we uh, paired up with other student organizations and our kids still only got credit for working for the Honors College, but we would pair with other organizations just so there was more students. And we also do the big event. We always have a team at the big event. You guys all remember that. And um, so, yeah, we, we uh, give credit for our projects, but certainly we encourage our students to do other projects as well. Let me throw one more thing out there. Our, our freshman class, you guys had freshman experience, I think is what it was called when you were there. And in the literature anyway, it says that you did a freshman class community service project in that freshman experience class. 
Is that true? Those of you that are pre-me? You have to ask. I don't okay. remember. I don't okay. either. I don't remember that a long time ago. Yeah. So Pretty what we did, we created a uh, what's called the Pitt Project. And the freshman, uh, it's called Intro to Honors now. It's not freshman experience anymore because that's no longer around. But they organized the Pitt Project. And it's basically a very small, big event. Uh, we usually do about 21 projects uh, in the fall. It's always the third weekend of October. And we just go around and rake leaves and clean gutters and do all those things that the big event did. It's just that we do it in October as the leaves are falling. And so it, it's a way for the freshman class, they break up into teams. We have a head honcho and then they break up into teams to do marketing and getting trucks and uh, finding places to deliver the stuff after we're done. So it really builds team within the group, provides some leadership opportunities right off the bat for those freshmen and uh, helps the community out. So that's kind of, a, and we invite other student organizations to join us for that, even though we organize it, other groups can jump on and, and form a team as well. John, you got another question? Yeah, yeah, here's a question that was submitted uh, at, at registration, Dr. Fuchs. Uh, are we still selling the Honors College to local high school students in Crawford, Labatt, Cherokee counties, et cetera? And then in part two, uh, is the Honors College still in jeopardy of being discontinued at PSU? Right, okay, so I'll answer the first part. Um, you know, I will say that I, I don't visit the local schools as much as I do other schools because we kind of assume that they kind of know about us because there's been so many that have come through. Uh, I can tell you this year, there's uh, six kids from Colgan that are in the interview pile. There's five from Pittsburgh High School. Uh, Brandon, there's no, none from Labette County uh, this year where you came from, because I know you're the one who asked that question. There's a lot of Webb, Carl, Carthage, Joplin. So I do think it still is well known in the region. What I wanted to try to do was get students from farther away and so I've gone, I did three uh, fairs in Arkansas last year, uh, done a couple trips down to Oklahoma, um, lots of Kansas City because I'm from there. And so it's really easy for me to go up the night before and spend the night with my folks and see them and then hit a school the next morning. And our recruiters uh, do a pretty good job, I think, also of, of helping us out in those farther reaching areas. So I do think we're still uh, getting students from this area, Brendan. So the second part of the question, for those of you who aren't uh, aware, the Honors College was brought to the floor of the Faculty Senate on two separate meetings last year about the validity of the expense that they put into the Honors College and what, you know, are you students better because you were part of the Honors College? Do you give more to the university? Do you give more money back to the university because you were part of the Honors College? And I was like, Okay, so I put together a study and I did a lot of data analysis and gathering and presented it to the Faculty Senate this fall. And given the budget situation that we're in, uh, that all schools are in, it's not just PSU as you well know, it is a big expense. It's three quarters of a million dollars a year in scholarship money for 30 students. That's a lot of money and you know, I'm the first one to admit it. But I feel that what you all bring to the university through leadership and involvement and uh, enhanced academic ability and interaction with faculty, the faculty love working with you because you're motivated and, and you're interested. I think that far outweighs the money. Well, but I'm not the money guy. So there are, there's some discussion that's gonna happen this spring about not doing away with the Honors College, but looking at maybe more of an honors program and, and please don't quote me on this. This is just some, some brief conversation that I've had with some folks where in lowering the ACT to maybe a 27, and basically if you have a 27, you're invited to be part of the program. Uh, maybe have some scholarship money associated with it, but probably not to the extent that it is right now. So this is not something that I want to see happen. Um, I feel these students are really, really important to the university, but they have a bottom line they have to meet. So we'll see how that fleshes out. Can I ask a follow-up question to that? Has there been any thought or consideration given to contacting Honors College alumni about helping solve the funding problem? Because this is the first time I've heard of it. Mm -hmm. And, um, I do give some to the university, but if, if it's one of those things, if I 
kind of knew that I could make a difference to keep the Honors College going because it did, I, I really enjoyed being part of it and it made a difference in my experience and knowing that it, it you know, additional funding and help potentially would impact what I gave. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, John might be able to help me out here because, you know, I don't know what the contact process is for alumni. Yeah, okay. uh, we, we send an annual fund drive out uh, every year to all Honors College alumni. Do you all get that? Shake your heads yes or no. Do you, have you ever seen that through? See, that's what I'm concerned is maybe that's not getting to some people. Mm -hmm. We use whatever address is on file because that's a hard copy mail. It's not an email. We, we actually send that through post mail. Uh, and we, uh, mail, yeah, we mail to quite a few people through that. Uh, it, it always goes out in November. Uh, so maybe, John, there's a disconnect here with communication that, that students aren't or alumni aren't getting some of those core that could be. I'd say, though, that it's what I'm receiving is general fund, donate to the general fund. It's nothing Honors College specific. And I, I think Ellie's right. Should I, would I have known that my program, that you know, same thing had been a big impact on my life is in jeopardy? I'd reconsider where I was directing funds and how much that's, I was giving. That's great, Samantha and Ellie. That, that this is information that I don't know. You know, all we do is process mm -hmm. and hope for the best. You know, so John, what uh, we use the Millennium, don't we? Yeah. So a couple of things. I mean, and, and this is the biggest struggle that we have, and really the biggest struggle that any alumni office has is keeping keeping up with where our alumni are, are moving to. And, you know, there are some systems in place. We have an office in our building called Advancement Services, and they're essentially the ones who keep the database. It's, people would assume it's my office, but it's Advancement Services. And so they have some, some ways that they are able to uh, get information as far as mailing addresses. It's not always correct, but for the most part, we really rely on our alumni letting us know where they've landed. Uh, if their email address has changed, if their mailing address has changed. Like I said, sometimes we can get updates through these various systems uh, on mailing addresses, but, but email addresses, you know, we have no way of, of knowing unless you let us know. Um, yep. You know, social media has been incredibly helpful uh, in, in helping us uh, uh, stay up to date with folks. I, I'd be really curious, you know, how many of you who are on this meeting tonight found out about this because you got an email from us versus you saw it uh, in a sponsored ad on Facebook. Um, so, you know, we, we try all those different methods, but yeah, we, we definitely struggle with, with keeping up to date information. And that's something that every alumni association across the country deals with. Uh, as far as funds, you know, being aimed specifically uh, towards the Honors College. I mean, it's, that's, a, that's a great idea. It, it makes me wonder, and you might know this, Dr. Fuchs, is there a particular endowed scholarship that is specific for it's, Honors College students, or is that just coming out of the university budget every year for those scholarships? The scholarships come from the university budget. The, the big, the 756 is just something that somebody in Russ Hall decides that's what they're gonna give us. Uh, we do have the foundation account, of course, and that's where all the money goes that I'm speaking of that we do through these fundraisers that goes into a foundation account. And we'll have anywhere from $7,000 to $12,000 in that account at any given time. And with that amount, we basically use it for operations. Uh, I like to take the executive team to the national conference every year. And so that's usually a big expense is just taking the students to wherever the national conference is. Um, but yeah, Ellie, I think you, you have a, a great point and Samantha too. I think that John, maybe we can make some notes. I assume there's some outcomes that come with these meetings as well. And let's, let's find a way to better connect and, and make sure that the folks out there know that we are having troubles or there's some concerns anyway, that maybe we can get some help. John, no, is that copy mail, is that a statutory requirement that you have to mail, mail the drive or is that just the way it's been, have it made a change? Uh, no. you know, I had done that through the music department when I was chair there. And so when I came to the honors college, I just did it the same way, truthfully, Samantha. And yeah. I'll tell you, it cost me a lot to mail it too, you know, by the time you print all those and everything. So if, if there's another way to do it electronically, I'm all for it. I think that. if you could do like a paid advertisement through some of the bigger websites that we're all looking at, that's that's how we all get our news, right? Well, there's a lot of 
time saved and a lot of ability to spread the information. I found out about this event because Parisa shared the link with me. Yes. Text message. Oh, Facebook, yeah, was, yeah. yeah. What the heck is Brittany Streif, by the way, Beth? <laughs> She's the one yeah, who was guilty of all into being here. Where is she? It's, it is Pancake Day. So, I mean. So, I think, I mean, if you look at just how many people were in each year that we were welcomed into the program alone, um, if you look at just getting small donations from each person that was a part of the program that was dedicated specifically to an endowment for it, you would have a lot of ability to actually just go to the university and say, look, even if this isn't enough to show you that you could sponsor individual students, you can see that you have the excitement and the enthusiasm of the alumni that were a part of this program that they want to show their support, even if they're not able to show the full financial support and commitment that you're looking to get out of this, because you're also bringing people out of this program that are working in fields like education and research and, you know, really valuable programs that don't necessarily result in high paying careers, but result in really <laughs> dynamic shifts and, and value to the society that we're trying to create. Yeah, yeah. Point well taken. All right, I've made a note here on this one and, and John, I'll get with you after. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's, you, it's Kathleen, I'm, glad, yeah. I'm glad this came up and I have a meeting with Kathleen in the morning. So, you know, I can, I can bring that up too. You know, one thing too is my office is, you know, so you guys probably don't, I mean, my office isn't the fundraising wing of the university. Uh, you know, we're, uh, you could say we're the warm up act. But um, anyway, you know, we're here to keep you, we're, we're here to keep you connected and, and make you feel good. All right. And, and that's what we'd love to do. But we are often trying to think of particular groups on campus that we would like to have back for a reunion. And Dr. Fuchs, I don't know if you've had a, a, a reunion during your tenure uh, as director of the Honors College, but this is a group that I have said, boy, this is a, <laughs> these are folks we want to have back on campus. And, and wh what I would like to do, I mean, you know, it, it might be a bit overwhelming to say anybody who was ever a member of the Honors College. Now, do we know when it started, Dr. Fuchs, when yeah. Honors College began? There are, there are roughly 830 alumni of okay. the Honors College at this point. So, I mean, I suppose, you know, you could invite that entire group back because if you look at the typical percentage of individuals you get back for a reunion, that it, we could probably handle that. But sometimes for these reunions, it's nice to look at even a decade. You know, I'm just tossing this out there. If you were uh, part of the Honors College between 2008 and 2018, we're inviting you back, we're rolling out the red carpet, you're going to meet with the president. You're going to meet with Dr. Fuchs. You're going to have private tours of campus, this, this, and that. Um, you know, those sorts of reunions have been really successful for us. And obviously, it's going to be a while, I think, before we're able to do anything like that the way that we'd like to. But that's something that I've talked about. I mean, is that is that something that you all who are on this call, do you think that would be something you'd be interested in coming back to campus for? Yes, there was actually a group of us that got together last fall on campus. We just set it up ourselves. There were probably 10 of us that came to a football game in the Chile at one of the girls' houses, and we had a blast. So we would definitely be down. It would be a lot of fun. Ellie and I were going to come last, it was last summer, or I guess you probably weren't coming back for it, but well, we had a group no. of about well, six no. or seven. We had six or seven. We well, probably would have been ten with families. We were planning yeah. to come back last last summer, and then COVID. Well, one thing that I've been thinking about that that leads right into this is John asked when this started, and in uh, spring of 2022 is the 30th anniversary of the first graduates from the Honors College because it was started in 1989. So uh, Gina Pinamonte. John was in that very first class. And so I've kind of been thinking about trying to do some sort of a reunion at our banquet. Now our banquet is different also now than it was, uh, you guys used to do a lunch banquet, at least under Julie Samuels, where you invited in the new students as well, or maybe Ellie, maybe something different from yours, but we do an evening banquet now. Uh, and we have, you know, 130 
we invite parents and teachers and it, it's just, it's a really you know nice dinner. And so John, I had been kind of thinking about making a big deal, bringing Fogg back, bringing Brannick back, Samuels, uh, bringing Hilt's daughter, Bob's dead wow. now, but his daughter still lives out in Garden City. And I'm sure she would come back and because I'm only the fifth director of the program. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to have all the directors back, invite as many alumni back as we could for that 30th anniversary. Um, and that wouldn't be until May, but it would get us back on campus together. What do you think about that? I'd love to talk to you more about that. I, I'd love to to help. I mean, what what? That's typically in May. Yeah, first Monday in May. You know, maybe it could be something where we invite people back over that weekend and we do mm-hmm. something for them on Sunday. We have some social events and some tours of campus and things like that. And then you have your regular event on that Monday. Can we stay in the dorms? <laughs> <laughs> Roxanne, will you stay with me? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Like our overnight in Bellinger Hall. <laughs> Leave that up to Dr. Fuchs to arrange for you guys. Um, I want to come back. I think that'd be fun. Did you Only if honors, it's Willard Hall. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Did, you have honors, did you have honors clusters when you were here too? Did you have an honors floor? Yeah, yeah. That's actually how I met my wife. She's in the background of this call, but she's hiding from us. Okay. <laughs> uh, she looked across the hall my freshman year, and now here yeah. we are. I say I have lots of honors grandbabies now. Kids who yep. met, at the, met at the overnight, got married, and had babies. I think There's I have like six or five seven. couples. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's Perfect. awesome, isn't it? Yeah. It's a good time. <laughs> um, jumping back just a little bit, as someone who didn't get their honors college like senior banquet at all um, due to COVID, <laughs> I would totally love to come back for um, any sort of banquet event in the future. And I know anyone else in my class probably would too. I think I am the farthest away of those in my class that have graduated so far, so if I can make the trip, so can they. Everybody can. That's good. Um, Kind of along those lines, I put in the chat, and I like messed it up too, because I get Indeed and LinkedIn messed up in my mind, but I am on like LinkedIn right now, and I don't think the Honors College has a LinkedIn page. Mm -hmm. Um, So as, I mean, as a someone who's trying to do professional networking all the time, it'd be really nice if I could add the Honors College to like my my interests and my page that I was an Honors College member at Pitt State. And then that'd be a great way to ask for donations and send out the newsletter um, to people. It's another yeah. app that dings on my phone that, you know, every time mm-hmm. something's posted, I do see it. Okay. Another job for the marketing team. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. What other questions do any of you have? about Honors College or even the university in general? I have some for them. All right. I wanted to kind of have you talk about some of your most fond memories and you have to tell me who the director was during your tenure, but what are some of those most memorable experiences from the Honors College? I I would love to hear your stories. Okay, well, next year we'll get together. And, uh... I think all my, like, all my memories come from freshman experience, just being in that class together, getting to know each other. Rye and his, like, singing. Uh-huh. Remember when he, like, sing his lectures or sing his speeches? Um, yeah. So Ellie and I were, Ellie and I met. We were roommates. We were paired together. Dr. Brannick paired, paired us together, and we've been besties ever since. Yeah. That's, I think that's my favorite memory. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was trying to think of like specific ones, and one of the ones that came up, it would have been our sophomore year, but like our group was so close. And we, it was, we moved in, we just moved in, and we, we had like everyone from our class over. We had a barbecue, and that's where that picture of like um, Sarah sticking her finger in Jared's ear came from. That one, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'll just send it to you. Anyway, I just like ha- having, having that group of, um, like almost like family, like it was my, that was my PSU family and they were always at the house or we were always doing things together. Um, and we, I don't remember there being clusters. We were the only honors college people in our hall or on our floor, um, but we were all paired together. Um, and yeah, just, uh, you know, there's 
five or six of us that Pinkle was talking about how we were all going to, well, not me, but most everyone in the group was going to come back to PSU last year. And, um, you know, there's a group of us girls that there's a girls weekend every year. And I've unfortunately have only ever been to two, but every year since we've left, there's been a girls weekend and we take turns planning it. And like, there's some of my closest friends just. That's yeah. awesome, Ellie. Yeah. And it's still very, very important to us. I think the students who are recent here will admit too that it's a family. You know, I, I don't feel like a director. I feel like a dad. You know, I, I treat these kids as my own kids. I care about them like my own kids. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's still a, a big part of the program. Yeah. I think my honors classes were way more entertaining and interesting than any of my other general education classes like the discussion format and just all the ideas and it was just a lot more fulfilling in that aspect and I did meet a lot of really good friends from the honors college and then study abroad was definitely another like really fond memory for me and I actually got to go twice and yeah I don't know <laughs> traveling overseas was amazing and I am so glad. I know I my college experience would not be the same if it wasn't for Honors College. And that makes me so sad that they're trying to change, you know, everything. You, you know, those kids aren't going to get the same experience. Thanks, Christina. I think for me, I was back in uh, Dr. Brannick's day, and I think my last year was when it transitioned to Dr. Dr. Samuels. I um, can't remember exactly, but um, just the beginning, I think uh, someone mission, mentioned it wasn't necessarily a freshman experience for me, but um, coming early to the orientation and, and meeting people in the cohort and then taking those classes with that same cohort group and developing those relationships through being in the same classes with, with those people. And I'm still in, in touch with a couple honors college people from my class today that are I would consider my best friends. Thanks, Aaron. Hey, Aaron, tell us what you do right quick, will you? I think this um, is an interesting story. I used to be a band director. That's how I really got to know Dr. Fuchs. And uh, I'm currently working for the FBI. I'm training right now at Quantico. As a what? Uh, as a what? Intelligence analyst. <laughs> I, you just don't meet somebody like that every day. I know all of you have very cool jobs. But when she told me she was doing that, I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. Now you have to shoot us all right, Aaron, now that we know what you do. Yeah, it's, we got to keep it on the DL, guys. <laughs> the classified information. <laughs> yeah. I am recording heard... this meeting, everybody. Oh, no. <laughs> Evan, we haven't heard from you, buddy. How's the hockey team doing? Is Evan still awake? <laughs> he, uh, he, must not, he must not have a microphone. Ah, uh, he says I've got, no, no, no. That's got a too microphone. Bad. On my, That's too bad. Actually playing today. I've got a microphone on my left side. <laughs> you need to get into the 21st century technology there, Evan. I'm a little sarcastic if you haven't been able to tell. It's all right. You know, I'd certainly say if you, if you haven't been back on campus, you haven't missed much the last 10 months, but <laughs> <laughs> if you've been gone for a few years, particularly if you've been gone for five years, uh, some major, major changes on campus uh, with uh, our new facilities, um, with the Block 22 project, uh, with what's going on in downtown, uh, some really exciting things. So if you get a chance to get back on campus, uh, particularly uh, in the warmer months when maybe things feel a little bit better and a little bit safer, you know, don't hesitate to uh, stop by the alumni office or let us know that you're gonna be here because we'd love to be able to arrange some tours of some of these new facilities for you. Uh, you, can, you can look at pictures all day long, but when you see these in person, uh, people's jaws tend to drop. So we're, we've been very lucky to have some of these places on campus. Likewise, if Parisa, you know, if you guys come back to campus in your little group, please look me up. I'd love to spend some time yes. with you just hanging out and talking. So I, we would love that too. 
Is Dr. Martin still there? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, just yep. love her to pieces. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. Roxanne, we haven't heard from you. Where are you from? What era are you? Uh, I was in with Teresa. We graduated in 2010. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you guys were just going out as I was coming in then. Yeah, right before, yeah. You know, so and I kind of agree with everybody else. Just it was nice. So I came from North Central Kansas. So it was nice to come to the Honors College and just have kind of a preset group of people because I didn't know anyone at Pitt State. So kind of a group of people to fall in with and talk to. You know, Julie left the campus about two years ago. Julie Samuels. I think she's a principal. Is she's a friend? principal, yeah. And I, yeah. gosh, I forget. It's maybe like Osawatomi, I think. Yeah, yeah, someplace uh, up southwest of Kansas City. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was great. Julie was great. Becky's great. I love Becky Brennan. Parisa had asked if, if there was any sort of big retirement shindig when, when Becky left, and I, I didn't hear about anything, and I'm guessing that's due to COVID, and at that point in the spring, we were pretty much locked down. So I, unfortunately, I'm not Actually, sure. Actually, it's, it's this spring. It's this oh, spring. I thought... Really? Okay. I don't know why. I was thinking it was last spring. Okay. Well, hey, maybe we'll get to do something then. Yeah, I think in the newsletter, we had an article on her about okay. retiring, and I think it's coming. She may be in phase now, but I think she's leaving this spring. Yeah. You know, some people, I know I don't want anything when I leave. I just want to close my office door for the last time and walk out, you know, so some people may not uh, want to have a big event. They'll probably be packing my bags for me. Say, here, go on, get out of here. <laughs> Other questions or thoughts or memories? Can I share a memory real quick? Sure. Um, so I was just thinking about this as like a freshman and then as a peer mentor and then as a peer mentor coordinator, I went to four years of overnight orientations. So I got to see so many like who am I presentations and I will never forget Amanda Trout's song about herself. Um, that she wrote for her presentation. It's like the cutest thing ever that she had like preset slides for and everything. And then um, we had another member uh, named uh, Brooks who forgot to do his presentation. So instead of like putting up his own PowerPoint he just went up and like reopened the one before him and like pretended all of the info on her slide was about him. So he'd be like, this is my family. And then he would talk about like who his family was even though it was like a picture of hers. Um, <laughs> And there's just all kinds of fun, quirky stories about how people introduce themselves that are just really good memories for me that kind of span over like four different classes and not necessarily just my graduating class. What she's talking about is at the overnight, we do a thing called the Who Am I show and each freshman gets three minutes to stand up and tell the group who they are. And usually they have some sort of a PowerPoint or something like that. And this past year, we started a Who Am I Now show as closure so in the overnight when they come in they do the who am i and then when they graduate at the banquet they do who am i now and they can kind of relate how they've grown as an individual and, and as a person i think i think it's a cool thing and yes we do get some very creative um brooks never prepared anything ahead of time though so you know that's just the way he is that's great anything else my who am I presentation. I think we might've been one of the first years to do that in, in 11, but my who am I presentation was me attempting to juggle with an absolute dark red sunburn from head to toe. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan's quite the juggler. I remember that. <laughs> Evan remembers that too, he said. Yes. Well, we've got some stuff to give away. If you think of anything else you want to ask or say, you can, you can certainly do that. But um, as I said, we're, we're going to drop these things in the mail. Now, I can't say I've mailed to Australia before, but I, I assume it's completely doable. We'll probably just it take is, it. It's, it's doable, just probably expensive. <laughs> well, well, you're, 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 worth you're worth it. Where are you from originally, Ellie? I'm from Joplin originally. Okay. I can read. Yeah, how, long so have you been in, how long have you been in Australia? Yeah, so I came here for the first time in 2009. Uh, Dr. Brannick encouraged me to apply for a Rotary International Scholarship. Oh, and it, the, it was basically like pick five universities and we'll assign you one 
um, but it had to be outside the continental US. And I thought to myself, well, Australia is a place I will probably never visit on my own without an excuse because it's so far away and it's so expensive. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I got one of those scholarships and I came here and did my master's and I met my husband who lived across the hall at college and the dorms, they call it college here. It's university and then you live in college. It's very confusing. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so I've, I, I came back and worked in Kansas City for a year because I already had a job, but um, I've been here full time since 2011. I can That's hear awesome. it in your voice. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. It, it is amazing how many people say, you have such an accent. And everyone here is like, no, you really don't. <laughs> Accents are fascinating. <laughs> Aren't they? Yeah. All right. So, Brendan, you like Vegemite, Ellie? No. We've got, we've got this disgusting. for you, sir. Can we just save the ship and just drive by the university sometime? Hey, you know what? If you want to come by, Thank you. is that easiest for you? I'll come by and say hi sometime. Sure. Okay. We'll, we'll we'll keep it we'll keep it fresh for you. All right. Put that money in the honors college account that you're saving for the shipping. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jennifer is Jennifer Jackman still on the call? I can't I can't see. You guys saw that she said she had to get off earlier. Okay. Well, then I'll skip on to somebody who is on the call. Ellie, I bet I can mail these Pitt State coasters to Australia. Okay. Yay. That's very, very mailable. So congrats yep. to you. you. I'm taking notes who's getting what here as we go along. So excuse me. Christina, do you, do you need a Pitt State alumni license plate frame? If you do, that's coming your way. If I was muted. Sure, we'll always take one. <laughs> All right. Good deal. All right, Thank this one's you. a little different. This goes to Olivia. This is a Pitt State cutting board on eco-friendly bamboo. So excited. I share the cutting board link every time it comes up as a giveaway from the alumni. Right. Right. We'll see. Never win. There you, there you go. Outstanding. All right, we've got a PSU mug coming to Parisa. So that will be coming your way. Thanks, John. You bet. It's good to see you. Former ambassador. President. <laughs> Don't forget. So, all right. So, Roxanne, this is a really nice Pitt State fleece blanket. Awesome. So uh, that will be coming your way. Sorry, we didn't have it to you a few days ago when you really needed it, probably. Yeah. Supposed to snow tonight anyways, so I'll still need Better it. late than never. All right, let's see here. Evan, Evan Wilson, we've got a Pitt State cooler coming your way. So congrats to you, sir. <laughs> okay, we've got once a gorilla, always a gorilla koozie with a pair of sunglasses in it. Um, that is going to Aaron. Aaron, we hope you feel better soon. Thank you. I love those koozies. Good. Good, good, good. Okay, let's see who I have left here. Jason already signed off, but Jason's going to get a koozie too. Samantha needs a gift, I think. Samantha, I've got one more of these that we'll send your way out to Arizona. You can drink your nice cold drink out of it while we're all here freezing, okay? Think about it. Jake, we'll put a margarita in it for you. Hey, you guys are using your salt wrong. It goes on the rim, not on the roads. That is even better. So I am out of giveaways. Did anybody get left out? Did everybody get something? Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Come on by. I got something for you. I got the gift of your presence tonight. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very good. So we'll get that stuff. We'll get that stuff in the mail. But we certainly appreciate you taking some time out of your evening to, uh, to meet with us. And, and like I said, we'd, we'd rather see you in person. But we are able to, uh, we're able to talk to people this way that I'm quite certain we wouldn't have the budget to <clears throat> head over to Australia. And uh, saw Samantha in Arizona a couple of years ago. Can't wait to come back. But it's going to be a little while, I think. 
So, uh, but, you know, certainly if you need anything, uh, if you don't know the answer to something, obviously you have a wonderful contact with Dr. Fuchs, but don't hesitate to reach out to my office as well. Uh, we're always here to help and we'll send out a follow-up email tomorrow that'll give you some links uh, to some of the things that our office does. I don't want to bombard you with lots of advertisements or anything tonight, but I mean, obviously as, as members of the Alumni Association, which all of you are, uh, you're entitled to all these different things. So we'll send out some links for that. Um, certainly if you live in the four state area, um, we haven't made it out as much as we usually do, but particularly if you're in Kansas City area, Wichita, Springfield, Northwest Arkansas, Northeast Oklahoma, those places, um, we, we come to those areas regularly and we'd love to see you. We do after hours events and dinners, uh, haven't this year, but we are delivering fried chicken these days. You know, we're, we're, we're desperate for ideas to, to, uh, to see people. And somebody said, well, why don't you bring us some fried chicken? And our alumni are just crazy about fried chicken. I mean, it's, it's, it's surreal. And so we drove up to Kansas City last year and delivered 350 chicken dinners. And you would have thought we were handing out $100 bills to these folks. They were just going bonkers over it. So we're going to do that again this spring. We're going to hit all those major areas. So uh, even if it's just for a for an elbow bump and a quick hello, uh, we hope that we'll get to see you this spring. And we're certainly looking forward to a better and easier times, hopefully in the summer and fall when we can get together and do do more of the face-to-face -face stuff that we really love. So well, next time you guys go on tour and come to Arizona in the summer, bring some tropical snow with you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to request a mall deli. Oh, nope, queso from Cafe Del Rio, please. Oh, <laughs> queso oh, and spoon bread, please. All the things, all of those. Send them over here. <laughs> the the mall deli dressing, it. we get asked for that a lot yeah. too. Yes. I did get to share the chicken with my family in Tulsa when you guys were in Tulsa. Had a whole family pack of food, so that was fun. Outstanding. Outstanding. Thanks for putting this together. It was really yeah. exciting to see that come across Facebook. That's that's absolutely great. And and you know, keep us up to date if your email addresses change. Uh, but you know, if you're if you're on social media, which I'm guessing a lot of you are, you know, what we've got we've got Instagram and and uh, Twitter and, and of course Facebook. So hope you can follow us in one of those methods. We we are on LinkedIn too. We don't we don't do that quite as much. Um, Danielle Driscoll, who is our assistant director, uh, does a really great job with our social media. She's, she's much hipper to it than I am. So uh, anyway, we appreciate your support. It's great to see your faces. Hope everybody uh, stays warm and stays safe. And if we can do anything at all for you, just, just don't hesitate to ask. Yeah, great to um, see you. Before we, before we wrap up, can I ask a quick question? Dr. Fuchs, if I send you an email, can you send me the last newsletter? Because I think... Yeah. I accidentally deleted it. I went to read the interview with Dr. Brannick and I couldn't find my, I usually get them, yeah. but I couldn't find it. So if I send you an email, can you resend it? Yeah, Thanks. and just so you know, also we archive all those on the Honors College website. And so you can find, oh, yeah, yeah, but I don't know that that went up yet. So please go ahead, Ellie, and send me an email. I'll be happy to send it to you. Okay. Will do, thank you. Yep. Great to see everybody. Thanks Great everyone. Time. Once Thanks a girl, always a girl. That's Take right. Care. Bye. Bye, bye bye thank you i'll talk to you soon dr fuchs thank you you got it buddy interview day bye.